and welcome to this Tech Talk. My name is Mike Lane, and I'm the Global Education and Inside Sales Manager for Hexagon Geospatial. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, these are all very hot topics, buzzwords that we hear a lot these days. But how often do we fully understand the differences, the benefits, and when to use one machine learning algorithm over another? I'm going to specifically talk about the geospatial industry, working with imagery, and how machine learning can be beneficial over some of the more traditional types of classification and feature extraction algorithms. This is part one of a two-part series. In part one, I'll go over general definitions to connect the dots and the industries and applications using AI and geospatial today. In part two, I will get into more specifics of the machine learning and deep learning algorithms themselves, how they are unique and differ from one another. I'll keep a pretty high level and provide an overview with some tips and tricks on which machine learning or deep learning algorithm to use when and for which data. This is a quote from Robert Cardillo, director of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency in his Geoint 2017 keynote, and this was back in 2017. In just five years, there may be a million times more geospatial data. Yes, a million times. It was three years ago. The idea and this notion that data is increasing is not news, but a million times is a lot more data, and we'd better prepare for that. As he stated, with the traditional data management and data analysis approach and what we've been doing in the past, the NGA would need 8 million more analysts in just five years, and that simply isn't realistic. So in order to optimize the monetary investment in all of this new data, we need new ways to transform raw data into actionable, intelligent information to mine this data and get what we need out of all of it. So first of all, let's define these three words that sometimes get used interchangeably, but are in fact quite different. Artificial intelligence or AI is a broad term and it, ref it refers to this idea where machines can execute tasks in an intelligent way. Now machine learning is different. It is a form of AI, but it is the process of using mathematical algorithms in order to parse data, to learn from it, to find the anomalies, and to predict future outcomes, and then cluster the events or patterns together. It's a specific type of AI that's put into practice, and machine learning continues to learn from data as new data is brought in. Therefore, it can become increasingly more accurate as the machine learning algorithm moves on. Deep learning is different yet, and it uses software to emulate how the human brain functions and then identifies information. AI is definitely not new. It started back in the 1950s, but it's becoming increasingly popular because of how much data that we are collecting in all shapes and forms these days. Here's a couple other ways that you can think about it as well. Human intelligence exhibited by machines and a general term for making computers perform human tasks. There's strong AI and then there's weak AI. And strong AI is something that we see in these futuristic movies where computers can do absolutely everything that we can, but we're not there yet. There's also narrow AI, which we interact and we use on a daily basis. And sometimes you may not even know that you are using it. Um, your email spam filter, for example, for recognizing emails that should be coming into your inbox and those uh, that aren't recognized and should not. The computer learns which domains are correct and can help you to filter that out. Face recognition, so if you're using any sort of, sort of social media and recognizing faces in photos, this is another form. And speech recognition, so if you ever use speech text while you're driving or if you speak to Alexa, these are all forms of narrow AI. 
Machine learning is the science of getting computers to act without being programmed. So it's a way of programming where the computers learn from data. It involves teaching a computer to recognize patterns, learn from the patterns, and then be able to make predictions based on this data. There are four different categories of machine learning system-based outputs. Classification, which is the identification of the category a specific object belongs to. Regression, which is the prediction of the attribute associated with an object. Clustering or segmentation, grouping of similar objects into one single group. And then dimensionality reduction or reducing the number of random variables. Machine learning has three simple steps. First of all, it needs data to be able to train itself. Then it needs to learn from the patterns and then it can classify data that it hasn't seen before. The ability to reuse and repurpose machine learning algorithms for different things, such as identifying pervious versus impervious surfaces and using that same algorithm to be able to do object identification for buildings, roads, vegetation, is what makes machine learning extremely powerful. Our brain has billions of interconnected neurons that all talk to one another. So there's a bunch of our neurons that are able to identify specific features based on the attributes of that feature. Take for example a cat. When we see a cat, we see fur, whiskers, eyes, tail, etc. So all of these neurons fire and connect with one another, which then help our brain to say, yes, this is a cat. And these artificial neural networks are modeled on the same way. They're used to generate probabilities of an object being a certain thing based on these attributes or characteristics that it is trained to look for. And this is the basis of deep learning. It consists of many hidden layers between the input and the output, and each layer learns from the previous layer so that we can implement very high levels of, of learning and high level patterns. A convolutional neural network is a type of deep neural network, and it's particularly useful for identifying features and image analysis. So it uses convolution for extracting primitive features or features at higher levels. As we know, remote sensing is used in many, many industries, but each of those industries has challenges. So whether you are an urban planner, whether you work in agriculture or forestry, or you produce data, the need to be able to process data efficiently and quickly to save you time and money is important without sacrificing any sort of accuracy. So in machine learning, the data and the training data is the most critical part. You need to have enough unbiased data to be able to train the system effectively. You need attributes, which are features that are used to train the system. And these are the properties of the objects you're trying to classify to be able to distinguish and distinctly see between the different size, shapes, colors, and textures of your data to be able to train the system effectively. The quality and quantity is directly related to the accuracy and your output. So who can benefit from machine learning in the geospatial industry? Well, almost every industry actually. Land cover classification, forest fire prediction, looking at crop and disease detection, identifying different features such as rooftops or roads, performing change detection, perhaps in a disaster management scenario, and then also target detection for cars in a parking lot, ships, or planes. Here is one example of a feature classification using machine learning, starting from an image and creating a land cover feature classification through machine learning techniques and algorithms. So whatever industry you're in, using AI, machine learning, and deep learning can be beneficial. 
and can definitely save you time and money. The bottom line is that most imagery is expensive. So exploring ways to optimize your investment in your imagery and getting the most information you can out of that investment makes a lot of sense. Incorporating some of these AI and other newer technologies into your workflows, you can teach the machine to do the hard work for you and get the best ROI. Thanks again for joining me in this tech talk. Please visit www.hexagongeospatial.com to learn more about remote sensing, machine learning, location-based analytics, and I hope to see you again in part two of this two-part series.